episode of Alex's Toy Show with, with Feisty Pants. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Alex's Toy Show. It's the hot stove where we talk about baseball and the uh, things that go on in the off-season of baseball. Um, so, a um, couple of things, and then I want to get right to the Hall of Fame, because the Hall of Fame announcements were last week, and uh, Griffey got in, Griffey Jr., and um, Mike Piazza got in. But I, I was a little disappointed for the people who didn't get in. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, first, uh, first couple of signings we had... Uh, Kansas City Royals uh, re-signed Alex Gordon in the outfield. They renewed his contract. Well, they really they gave him a new one. Four years, $72 million with an option for 2020. I like that they're trying to keep the core team of, you know, the last couple of years, you know, the get the right people focusing on the right uh, positions. <laughs> All right. The Pirates uh, signed right-handed pitcher Neftali Feliz to a one-year contract, $3.9 million, and designated catcher Tommy Sanchez for assignment. Who else? Milwaukee Brewers re-signed Chris Carter, first base DH Chris Carter, uh, for a year, and designated catcher Yasmio Pinto for assignment. Catchers getting the shaft. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, the Atlanta Braves signed first base outfielder Kelly Johnson to a one-year contract. Kelly John, I'm glad Kelly Johnson still has a spot somewhere because he's a qua you know he's not the greatest offense, but he's a solid defense and he'll almost play any position that you ask him to. I'm glad he's still around. He's that kind of guy that you need on your team. The Dodgers signed right-handed pitcher Brandon Beachy for a one-year contract and designated left-handed pitcher Tyler Olson for assignment. The Phillies invited nine players to spring training including uh, a couple of top uh, prospects on the MLB prospect list. Shortstop J.P. Crawford, number five. Right-handed pitcher Mark Apple, Appel, A-P-P-E-L. I'm not sure how you say it. Number 43 on the list, though. Right-handed pitcher Jake Thompson is number 51, and outfielder Nick Williams, number 55, among the nine players the Phillies invite to spring training. New York Mets! They have a uh, right-handed pitcher, Jack Wheeler, is due back from Tommy John sur surgery to uh, join the rotation. That should be a little more exciting. Uh, I I'd like to see what the Mets do this year. I'm curious. Texas Rangers have right-handed pitcher, Hugh Darvish. Oh, shit. You thought the Rangers were something in 2015. Hugh Darvish wasn't even on the team in 2015. He was on Tommy John surgery. He's going to be back in 2016. That's going to be a team to, what, what, uh, to look out for. Holy shit. He missed the whole season, it's, uh, I wrote down here. Toronto Blue Jays. How about the extensions for Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion? They're, they're the two cornerstones of your team. And their contracts, I mean, I'm sure they're going to get renewed or something, but their contracts are both up in 2016, and you figure, they're, you know, they, they want to lock those guys in. Uh, Batista is going to make $14 million in 2016. Uh, Encarnacion is going to make $10 million. Batista batted 250, 40 home runs, and 114 RBIs. Edwin batted 277 with 39 home runs and 111 RBIs. So they're they're top shelf on that team. They need to uh, they need to get re-signed. Um, all right. So here is a quick list of I showed this last week. It's, right, so down the first column is obviously the player's name, and then the next column there is YOB years on the ballot, and then their stats, uh, you know, follow across the other columns. And I just want to show. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna do this slowly so you guys can get a look at all this. I just want to show everybody who's on the ballot and stuff like that and, you know, get you guys a feel for what they play. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can zoom that in. Maybe I'm going to zoom it wide. I don't, I don't even know if you need all that stuff. Uh, there, there was an ad that printed up in the middle there. I, I had to kind of fix it. And then uh, ho hopefully you can make out some or all of this. I don't even know. I'm going to... I'm going to check it out when I edit it back. Hopefully it's not too bad. Maybe if you put it on full screen. But uh, but anyway, what I wanted to say was I watch footage like all day long on uh, MLB Network. The BBWAA president, Derek Gould, uh, showed his votes here. He voted for Jeff Bagwell, Jim Edmonds, Ken Griffey Jr., Edgar Martinez, 
Mike Mussina, Mike Piazza, Tim Raines, Kurt Schilling, Alan Drama, Larry Walker. Peter Gammons shared his his uh, ballot with MLB.com. Jeff Bagwell, Ken Griffey Jr., Edgar Martinez, Fred McGriff, Mike Mussina, Mike Piazza, Tim Raines, Kurt Schilling, Alan Drammel, and Larry Walker. Joel Sherman shared his list with MLB.com. Jeff Bagwell, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Ken Griffey Jr., Edgar Martinez, Mike Mussina, Mike Piazza, Tim Raines, Kurt Schilling, and Alan Trammell. So this is what I'm getting at. You have some top writers and, you know, the people who get to vote, right? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, Alan Trammell. Oh, he's great. And, you know, the best shortstop, number four shortstop in the game, lifetime, this, that, and the other thing, he's bound to get in. Guess what? It was his last year. He only got 40% of the vote. How awful is that? If everybody, see, they made this point on MLB that day. They made the point where um, you have a collective group of writers. A lot of them are now younger writers who don't know who Alan Trammell was. Never watched Alan Trammell play, such and such like that. But yet, if so many people are like, oh, yeah, let's vote for Alan Trammell. How come he didn't get in? That's it. You have one of the greatest shortstops in the game, not in the not on not in the Hall of Fame. What a waste. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. got in with 99.3% of the vote. It, it was the highest voting ever. He broke um, what's his name's uh, percentage a couple of years back. It was like 84% or something like that. Griffey blew it out of the water. 99.3%.7.3. Point point 99.3% of the vote. Missed three votes out of everybody who voted for players to get into the Hall of Fame. Three people did not vote for Griffey Jr. I want to know who those three people are. Whatever. Mike Piazza got in uh, 83%. Very awesome. You know, there's a lot of there was a lot of steroids uh, scandal around Mike Piazza. You know what? You know he he um, he was tested. He never he never failed the test ever. So how can you? You know, how can you scrutinize that? I mean, I, th I think he was clean. I think he deserves to get in. Now, some of you guys uh, had questions in the Q&A about um, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, Mark McGuire. My opinion and where I stand on that, David Griffin, you know who you are. I don't think they belong in. Here's, here's to quote Hendu, Dave Henderson, had a locker right next to Jose Canseco in their great years on the A's. And Dave Henderson said, they do not belong in the Hall of Fame because they cheated. They they played the game at a level where the majority of the players were not playing. Now, a lot of people say Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Mark, uh, Roger Clemens had Hall of Fame careers, say, before 1998 and feel they should get in on the that credibility. But you know what? They still cheated and they still broke records, and that sticks. You know what I'm saying? There's no taking that back. Look at Pete Rose. He's not getting into the Hall of Fame. Why would you let other people who cheat get into the Hall of Fame? There, There's no room for you. You know what I'm saying? So next year on the 2017 ballot, they were talking about a couple players who come in on the ballot. Obviously, there's going to be more than the couple players I'm about to announce. But, um, you know, and they said, what do you think? Vladimir Guerrero. I'm thinking he's got a decent shot. Manny Ramirez. Hell no. Manny Ramirez failed twice on PED testing. Failed twice, was suspended twice, and clearly is a cheater. I think he gets less than 5% of the vote, gets right off right off the ballot in the first year. One and done. Ivan Rodriguez, yes. Maglio Ordonez had a great career. Hall of Fame first ballot? I don't think so. Maybe maybe second or third. Uh, Edgar Renteria, Jorge Posada. Yes. How how can you tell me Jorge Posada had that career that he had? He was a five-time All-Star, had five championships. Did he have gold gloves? I'm going to have to look that up. Somebody look that up and get back to me. But he's Jorge Posada. He, you know, he, he wasn't a slouch behind the plate. You know, maybe he didn't throw out runners too well, but you know what? He called a great game. And he can hit for a ton. I, I don't see why he wouldn't go into the Hall of Fame. Now, what I have next is um, a list of remaining free agents. Um, and I have some key dates I want to go over with you guys. Let's, let's do the key dates first. All right, so big dates right here. Tuesday, today, you're watching this. I'm filming this Monday night. You're watching this Tuesday. Uh, salary arbitration filing. And then Friday is uh, the 15th salary arbitration Figures are exchanged. Fantastic. Not to not to be confused with action figures. We're talking 
We're talking numbers. Uh, February 21st, salary arbitration hearings. And then Thursday, February 18th. Right there. Get a look at that. Pitchers and catchers report to spring training. Hot damn. That is the best news I've heard all winter. Um, February 18th. Uh, February 23rd, everyone else reports to spring training. February 28th is the first spring training game. And then Sunday, April 3rd, opening night. What the fuck is opening night? I mean, you know, I, I guess it takes away from the, from the pressure of opening day where, you know, it helps the travel schedule or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the hell people are smoking. And then Monday, April 4th, opening day. Very nice. Now, what I have over here is I have a list of teams and the remaining free agents that are out there. And I'd like to see some serious action take place in the next two weeks as far as the rest of this week goes and next week. All right, so I'm going to scroll this up right here. Okay, I got a lot of abbreviations going on. <laughs> you know, you may need to pause and read this a little bit, so I'm going to scroll very slowly. All right, all right. There you go, scrolling very slowly, very slowly. Back to the top. Scrolling very slowly, very slowly. Scrolling, pivot. This reminds me of the episode of Friends where Ross bought a giant couch and they were trying to get it up the stairwell. And he's like, pivot, pivot, pivot. And he said it really weird, like pivot or something. It was really annoying, but that was Ross. Ross was annoying on Friends and he, he was the annoying friend. Oh, I dropped the paper. There we go. Remaining free agents blank all right folks uh hopefully next week we'll have something more awesome to talk about uh check out some hall of fame numbers i posted for you there if you got anything to debate about the hall of fame and the people that belong in it and the people that don't belong in it or who you think belongs in it i want to know leave it in the comments that might give us something to talk about next week otherwise like this video leave me a comment and subscribe for more look at the decepticon symbol it's right right there decepticons they don't play baseball <laughs>